Good morning, Eric. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Schmidt from Bern in Switzerland. I'm going to present you the current evidence concerning the adjunctive use of lasers and antimicrobial photodynamic therapy to non-surgical mechanical instrumentation. Non-surgical subgingival instrumentation aims at eliminating the etiologic factors on root surfaces and is considered the standard of care in perio patients. It may be performed by either hand or power-driven instruments and results in improved clinical outcomes, such as reduced BOP and decreased PPDs. However, in sites with impaired access, for example, deep pockets or frication areas, residual calculus may remain on the root surface. Therefore, the use of lasers and photodynamic therapy has been investigated as adjunctive approaches to non-surgical instrumentation alone. Now, the most common laser applications for pair therapy include diode, carbon dioxide, neodymium doped yak, or erbium doped yak lasers. All of these wavelengths can be used adjunctively to, non, to mechanical non-surgical instrumentation to debride epithelium and connective tissue within peripockets, to inactivate bacterium, and to ablate subgingival calculus. An additional application of laser photons, known as APDT, aims at destroying bacteri bacterial cells by means of highly reactive oxygen radicals produced by a combination of a low-level laser light in conjunction with a photosensitizer. As you can see, stained molecules, such as in toledine blue or methylene blue, adhere on bacterial membranes. Low-level laser light stimulates those dye molecules, which leads to a reaction with oxygen and to the formation of singlet oxygen. Aggressive oxygen molecules then oxidize bacterial membranes. Now, let me present you the following systematic review conducted by Professor Salvi and co-workers. The aim was to compare the adjunctive effects of lasers or antimicrobial photodynamic therapy to non-surgical mechanical instrumentation alone in untreated perio patients. The following focus questions were adapted using the PICO criteria. A, in patients with untreated periodontitis, does laser application provide adjunctive effects on PPD change compared with non-surgical mechanical instrumentation alone? And B, in patients with untreated perio, does the application of APDT provide adjunctive effects on PPD change compared with non-surgical mechanical instrumentation alone? The primary outcome was change in PPD, and the secondary outcomes were defined change in CAL, residual PPD, change in BOP and plaque levels, change in subgingival biofilm composition, PROMs, as well as harms and adverse effects. The following inclusion criteria were applied. A follow-up of at least six months, more than 20 patients per treatment arm, a clinical examination at the six-month follow-up, a non-surgical instrumentation by means of hand and or power-driven instruments, studies including subgingival adjunctive laser application, and for the meta-analysis, studies including a single non-surgical mechanical instrumentation combined 
with a single adjunctive application of lasers or APDT, and B, studies reporting on PPD changes between baseline and the six-month follow-up. A total of 1,200 records were identified through the electronic search, 55 remained for full-text evaluation, and 17 for qualitative and quantitative analysis. That is 10 articles on adjunctive laser therapy and eight articles on adjunctive APDT. Five different types of lasers were used in 10 articles. In the six remaining articles, non-surgical instrumentation was performed in one session and in four it was delivered multiple times. A total number of patients treated was 370 of whom 230 were included in studies with a split mouth approach and 140 patients in studies with a parallel arm design, respectively. Eight articles reported on a combination of hand and power driven instruments. The data of the included RCTs provide an inconclusive picture regarding the benefits of adjunctive laser application. Meta-analysis could not be performed due to the low numbers of comparable studies, the heterogeneity of studies, and due to the lack of reporting mean PPD changes between baseline and the six-month follow-up. Concerning the APDT results, all studies were designed as RCTs. The total numbers of patients treated was 331. That is 120 patients received test and control interventions in a split mouth design, and the rest received either mechanical debridement alone or with adjunctive APDT. A diode laser was used in all studies. The wavelengths range between 655 and 980 nanometers, with an irrigation time ranging between 10 to 150 seconds per site. The maximum follow-up time amounted to six months. In order to conduct meta-analysis on reported mean PPD changes, between baseline and the six-month follow-up, studies were grouped according to wavelength, frequency of mechanical instrumentation, and application of APDT. One meta-analysis based on only two articles failed to identify a statistically significant difference in mean PPD changes in favor to adjunctive APDT. It should be noted that studies reporting on lasers and APDT as a monotherapy were not included in this review, as well as patients enrolled in SPT. In addition, a great heterogeneity among the studies was identified, in particular in terms of laser type, tip diameter, photosensitizer, the number of treated sites, the population, and a combination of these parameters. All but one study were performed in a university setting and only two reported on residual PPDs, which would also be meaningful from a clinical perspective. In conclusion and in accordance with the EFP S3 clinical practice guidelines, the adjunctive use of lasers and APDT is not recommended in untreated peripatients. I thank you for your attention.